Now let's look at store A using direct addressing. So the first thing that you do when you implement a new instruction is you think about what is the instruction trying to do. What does a store do? It takes information that is in the CPU and it puts it out to an address in memory. Okay. When you think about what information will be stored, you look at our CPU block diagram and you say, what could possibly be stored? The answer is it's either A or B. They're the only registers that you have in the data path that has information that you are, you are controlling. Okay? We don't typically store the instruction register or the memory address register. Those are used for separate things. But what we want to do is sometimes we'll bring information into the user, to user controlled registers A and B, and then we want to, maybe we manipulate it, maybe we don't, maybe all we do is bring something in and then store it, but we are ultimately want to take either A or B and store it to memory. Okay? In this example, let's look at storing A. Now, what we'll do is let's say that A already had some value in it, and let's make the value something obvious like, not AA, let's actually make it CC. Okay? So we had had to put something into A before we execute this instruction. You could have done it with a load A immediate. You could have done it with a load A direct from a port. But let's just say that we start this instruction with CC in the register A. Okay? Then the next thing that's kind of interesting is to think about where do you want to put this information? Okay? Where can we put this value. Well, if you go out and you think about the memory map for our example computer, do we want to store to program memory? Never. Program memory is where our code is. Okay, so you never write there. What about data memory? Yes, we could write there. That's, that's our temporary memory that we can use to store interim calculations or just store information. So we could write to data memory. What about an output port? Yeah, absolutely. We could absolutely store to an output port. So we could write to addresses 80 hex up to DF, or we could write to E0 up to EF. Would we ever write to an input port? The answer is absolutely not. That's an input. So we really can only store to these ranges of addresses. In this example, why don't we store to address E0, which will represent an output port. It'll represent output port 00 in this example. Okay? All right. So what I need to do is think about what is in or where my program is and then how we're going to move information back and forth. Okay? So we already said that AA contains C and now what I want to do is I want to think about where our program is. So let's just say for example that out in memory I am going to have this instruction. Okay? I'm going to have whatever this is, store a direct, okay, so this is going to be, we'll put store a direct, and you're going to have an opcode that sits right here. Now if you go look this up, if you look at the table that we assigned our opcodes from, this is actually going to be equal to 96 in hex, okay? And then it's going to need an operand. An operand is the additional information that is needed for the instruction. In this example, it has to be an address. It's going to be the address that we ultimately push our information out to or write to. So that is going to be E0. To do this example, we also need to know where this is located. So let's just say that this happens to be located at address 4 and 5. And when we start up this instruction, it's critical that the prior instruction, the guy that was up here, left the program counter pointing at 4. If, it, if they didn't do that, they screwed up and you can't execute this instruction. So when I do this, I also say that as I start this, program counter is equal to 4. Okay? We're all set, we're all ready to go, and now let's begin walking through this instruction. Okay? The first thing that we do in every single instruction is we perform a fetch. Okay? The fetch does what? It goes out and gets the opcode and it puts it in the instruction register. It takes multiple states to pull that off, and the first thing that you need to do is get the program counter, which is pointing to the opcode in memory, and we need to get it up into the memory address register so that we can go and read from that address. 
So to do that, we use our bus system. The first state is we need to take the control unit and we need to tell that bus one select line right here that I'm going to choose the program counter to drive my bus one. The reason we drive bus one is because in this particular architecture, that is how we take information from, from one of these registers, namely the program counter, and we get it back onto bus two. So we also had to tell bus two select to choose bus one, and now we have four for coming from the program counter that has gone over to bus one, back to bus two, and now at this moment in time, we do a MAR load. What that does is on the next clock cycle, MAR will be equal to four. Now the address has four, and that will allow us to access this information in memory. We're going to give it a second. It's going to happen in a clock cycle or two. So what we're going to do is after I do this instruction, and I've got MAR on there, I'm going to increment the program counter in order to get it ready to go read from the next location of program memory. So what I'll do is I'll come to a separate state, and I will say PC Inc. That will then convert program counter to the value 5, which is now pointing at where the operand is. That's perfect, because we know we're going to have to go get that later. At the moment in time that we've given it a state for the memory system to react, we are going to then say, OK, here comes the value that I was after. The value that I was after was 9.6. So we produced the address 4, and it's going to now bring this code back. We're now in our, our sfetch2 state. It's going to come down here, and it comes in on from memory. Now here's from memory. This is now equal to 9.6. And it's going to come up, and we need to take 8.7, Put it on to bus 2, so we tell bus 2 select now to select from memory, and now this value comes on and it overwrites bus 2, and where do we want to put this opcode? We assert IR load, and now the instruction register has 9.6. It took three states to do it, but we were able to get the information located at address 4 into the instruction register. We feel so good. Now what we do is say, let's take a state and decode it. So we're going to give ourselves a second to allow this to propagate back into the control unit, and now we can make a decision about this. We finally know what the instruction is. This is a store A direct. The other thing that I know which is critical is that I know I need an operand, and I know that operand is an address of where we're going to write to. So the next thing that we do is we say, OK, that means I'm going to go down a path in my state diagram that reflects the states to accomplish STA underscore DIR, to accomplish the story direct. What do I need to do next? I need to go out and grab the operand. Luckily, my buddy, the program counter, is pointing to it. Program counter is pointing to the next location in memory, so I say, voila, let's go get it. So to do that, we have to do the same thing that we did before, which was, I need to take the program counter and get it back onto the memory address register. This tends to always take three states. I don't know if you notice that. But the first thing we do is we tell bus one select to take the program counter, which is now 5, and it is now going to drive bus 1. We're going to tell bus 2 select to allow bus 1 to drive bus 2. And now, program counter is on bus 2. Who are we going to load? We're going to do a MAR load. So this state right here then overwrites MAR with the value of program counter, which was 5. That then goes out to the address bus, the address port. So we'll give it an extra state while we're here. Let's go ahead and increment the program counter. The reason we want to increment the program counter is to make it point to the next location in memory, which in our example has to be the opcode of the next instruction. That's the way the computer works. So now I'm sitting here. I have incremented the program counter using a whole state. And now here comes the op 
Iran. So here comes E0. Here comes E0. It comes back from the memory system. And this state right here is going to route that information to get it onto bus 2. So here comes E0. Let's first get it into the CPU. So it's going to come into the CPU on from memory. So what we need to do is change bus 2 select to choose from memory. And now here's E0. E0 is now on bus 2. And I need to sit and think about for a second, what am I going to do? What is the operand? It's the address of where I'm going to write to. So what do I need to do with that address? We put it into mar. Because mar is going to grab it. So I do a mar load. And it will then grab E0. And I will then allow that E0 to overwrite the, the address bus. And now the address has E0. That's pretty cool. Now I'm sitting here in a state where I have just done my three states. Program counter is pointing to 6. So I'm all done with the program counter. I've got the operand on the address bus. And I am now ready to complete the instruction. I want to write A to the memory system. The address is already set up. This is the first time we've done this. Think about what we need to do. How do I get information to the outside world? I get it to the outside world using two memories. So right here is how I get it to the outside world. I'll do pink. I'll do it like this. Okay. To get it to the outside world, I simply put it on the bus 1. So I'm going to have a state right here, my last state in this instruction, which will tell bus 1 select to choose A. So now A is going to drive through the multiplexer onto bus 1, which is wired directly to a port called 2 memory. 2 memory is now having C. We have it. We've got the address ready, which is E0. We've got the data ready, which is CC. What is the last thing that I need to do to tell the memory system, hey, this is a write now. Instead of giving you an address and you always pump back the data, here's an address, here's data, I want you to write it. I assert a signal called write. Look at write. Write is a port that comes directly out of the control unit. It comes out of the finite state machine, which is where what we which is great it's an output of the finite state machine but it doesn't go into the data path it goes directly out to the memory system this is the first time we've used write so this is critical when you code this up in VHDL it's just like taking mar and making sure that it's connected to address you got to make sure write comes out of the control unit and then goes to the write port of the CPU we are then done the way that this looks, when you think about what the waveform is going to look like, if I come along and look at this, I can zoom in on this instruction. Okay? I notice that when I start, A contains CC. You see that? When I am done, I am going to look at port out 00, and I am going to have CC there. It took fetch 0, 1, 2, decode 3, store a direct 4, 5, 6, 7, and it ended right here. And when I was done on the next clock cycle, I saw the value finally get there. Okay? If you look at what happened to review it from a timing analyzer point of view, program counter was starting at 4, put it into MAR. Then I incremented the program counter to 0, 5. I went and I read from 0, 4 which allowed me to grab 96, which was, oh, the opcode was 96. So the opcode <laughs> put it into the instruction register. And then what I did is I said, now I'm going to go out and I'm going to read from the program counter value. So I put that out on the mar. And then I went, I incremented the program counter. Then I went and read from it. And guess what came into memory? or it was E0, I then put E0 on MAR, and then finally I put CC out on to memory, and then I said write. 
So here's the control signal for right. Boom, it finally got there. So that's what this instruction will look like when you execute it. What does the VHDL for this look like? All you've got to do is go add more states to implement the state diagram. So you're going to add what states? You're simply going to go in. We already have fetch 0, 1, 2 and decode. You just add story direct 4, 5, 6, 7. And then you go in to your next state logic and you put in a decision that said, hey, this time when I look at where to go for my next state, I am now going to have an option that I will look at the instruction register and react if it happens to be store A direct. So the code for that kind of looks like this. You're adding these paths in here. We have already covered if the instruction register in my next day logic was load A immediate. Then we looked at the instruction register was load A direct. Now we added in another else if clause, which said if the instruction register equals store A direct, and I'm going to go to this store A direct 4. That then feeds me into the path that I created for store A direct. Feeling pretty good on that one. What do you do with the output logic? You're going to need to go put output logic for each of these four states, and you're going to need to choose the right output values for each of the four, and then you simulate it. And that is store A using direct addressing.